Hello, welcome back to Mr. JWW, and this is my final video of 2017. For those of you who have joined the journey from the beginning of this year, I think you'll agree it has been ridiculous. Uh, but looking back on this year, um, I have had the incredible opportunity of driving some of the world's most fantastic cars. And so I always see the magazines, the headline magazines like Top Gear and Evo and Autocar and all these guys, uh, they often uh, summarize their year with Car of the Year awards. And I love reading each and every one of them. Um, this year, I looked back on my year and you know realized how incredibly lucky and blessed I was to be put in the driving seat of cars that I didn't even dream of even seeing, never mind being able to drive and experience, and most importantly, share with you guys firsthand. So, instead of Car of the Year awards, you know this channel is all about smiles per gallon. It's how much theater and emotion a car gives you. They don't necessarily have to drive the best, although the rundown of cars that I'm about to give you all drive phenomenally well. Um, so I'm starting Mr. JWW's Smiles Per Gallon Awards. Let's take it from number five and see what car comes first. <laughs> yes. So it doesn't hang around. It does not hang around. Oh my goodness. This is just a nice reassuring tap. But those downshifts, man, it just has me shifting when I don't even need to, you know? Yeah. It's fabulous. Lamborghini, the Puffamante just blew me away. Whatever those guys have done in the lab over there, the dynamics of the car are fantastic. The gearbox is out of this world. If you watch the channel regularly, you'll know I'm a massive gearbox snob. So to have a, a twin clutch gearbox mated with such a ferocious, naturally aspirated V10 engine, all in the dramatic styling package that is the Huracan Puffamante, just ticked so many smile boxes. The whole time, I was there with those guys for the launch of the car earlier this year. I was constantly smiling. Every time I saw one drive by, heard one start up, just to sit in it before it even started to move is a sense of occasion. Lamborghini, I think, are best known for their theater, not necessarily their lap times. And all of a sudden, they pull out the Puffamante. So, yeah, massive ticks. And subsequently, since that, that car has launched, it has gone down a storm. Um, yeah, just hope I get to spend some more time in one next year. Hopefully some more track time, because on track it was sublime. Just, 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 just check this out. Oh, if this thing had wings, we would fly. Just give 
what you did. Uh, let me just try that again. <laughs> oh god! I've got to back off. I've got to back off. This is a joke. Whew. McLaren 720S. So, once again, if you're a regular subscriber to this channel, you'll know that I was the incredibly lucky and proud owner of a McLaren 675LT. Um, that thing, the LT, rewrote the smile glands on my face. And then, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, McLaren launched the 720S, which technically is actually the successor to the 650S. And I am telling you, the performance, the acceleration of the McLaren 720S is of another planet. I truly believe McLaren had assistance from another life form to develop such thrust in, at, at, at a level of car that is truly overlapping into hypercar territory. It is fast beyond. It really is encroaching into the hypercar realm. The trade-off for me was the LT, they nailed it with the theatre. Uh, and so when you were driving it slower, it was still a sense of occasion. Whereas the 720 is literally, you could daily that thing. And I, I have just spent two weeks with that car. Its breadth of ability is astounding. It has a big boot in the back, even bigger boot in the front. I lived with it. I did my Christmas shopping with it. It was fantastic. Aesthetically, it turns heads. I guess from a driving slow point of view, it didn't quite pull at the heartstrings like it did when it was going fast. So when this thing is on full chat, you've got this thing on cam, thick in its swell of torque, the pull and the, it literally compresses your diaphragm into the back of your seat. It's next level crazy. And so for me, as a dynamic complete package, 720S has ticked the most boxes all year. So well done to McLaren for that car. All I'm saying is I cannot wait for the LT version. Astonishing, yeah, it's <laughs> shouldn't be legal. What a what a piece of kit. <laughs> yes, the Bugatti Chiron needs no introduction. The just the experience of that car. It is it's everything you expect and more. The torque is relentless, but it's an appreciation of something more when you're in it. You accept okay that it's fantastic up to you know 150 miles an hour but it has the same performance again beyond that. Uh, and that's what this thing, that car is all about. It's all about truly pushing boundaries and the engineering capabilities of what a road car can do. Uh, and of course, with it being a Chiron, arguably the epitome of a hypercar, uh, just being around that thing is an incredible sense of occasion. Down to the final two.
Oh, the P1LM. Just looking back over that thing gives me goosebumps. Um, as you can see, so these awards for me, they really are about how much theatre a car can provide. McLaren released the P1 GTR, um, and then a company called Lanzante was able to make uh, some of those cars road legal. And if you didn't think that car could get any more hardcore, Lanzante then went and developed P1 LMs. It subsequently went on to break the Nürburgring record for its class, um, and as you can see from the content, it is the rawest, purest form of turbocharged hypercar, certainly that I have ever experienced. It is a sensory attack on every level, super rare, incredibly expensive. Um, just the fact that you have to wear earphones to talk to your passenger in itself is a massive sense of occasion, but the thrust and the induction noise and just the massive turbo sound, um, yeah, from the get-go is just one of the most flamboyant experiences I've had in a turbocharged car. with this transmission it is well it's something to behold check this out we've got six percent shorter gear ratios versus the standard f12 feast your earballs on this <laughs> wow what a thing have you heard those upshifts it is a tone change it is seamless there's a mild engineered tap in the back, which is lovely. But overall, it is just such a punchy shift. So, figures are 30% uh, faster upshifts and 40% faster downshifts. And this thing doesn't so much as change down a cog, it explodes down. It's like there's this explosive force that is pushing these gears down and up. Listen to this. What? Where do we go? Where do we go from there? I mean, we're in the realms now. This drivetrain, I've been in a La Ferrari. This is it. Honestly, what we have here is essentially, it feels very similar to the drivetrain of a La Ferrari. It's mated to a phenomenal high revving, and by the way, high revving. This thing revs out to 8,000. 900 
RPM. So we've basically got a naturally aspirated, super fabulous V12 engine from Ferrari that revs out to 8.9. I mean, that you might as well have just found the Holy Grail. The Ferrari 812, super fast. Um, yeah, you might have been wondering why this is number one. Remember, this is the Smiles Per Gallon Awards. It's not necessarily about the car, which is the fastest, although it is ballistically fast. Um, I think it all comes down to that engine and that drivetrain. Now, all of the cars that I've mentioned here all have twin clutch gearboxes, so they all have fantastic drivetrains, um, but the relationship of that drivetrain with the engine, the naturally aspirated V12 that revs to practically 9,000 RPM in this day and age is something to celebrate and something to behold. But the relationship between that engine and that drivetrain, upon downshifts, it is like a smack of ecstasy to the face. It is honestly, I, of all the cars that I've driven this year, I found myself unnecessarily upshifting and downshifting, playing that engine and drivetrain like an instrument. And so when I was going 20, 30, 40 miles an hour, that thing, that was the car that put the most smiles per miles on my face. And I still look back at that now and I recall those sounds, hearing that car going around Fiorano blew me away. Now, I was a Ferrari F12 owner, a long-term owner, um, and I thought that car was absolutely incredible. Then the F12 TDF came out and I wasn't sure how much further Ferrari could actually evolve that platform. Stepping into the 812, once again, I don't know how they do it, but Ferrari, for me, dropped the mic on this one. The chances are as well, the 812 as a platform might very well be the last purely naturally aspirated V12 from Ferrari. So that in itself is something to celebrate. And yeah, it's the one that for me ticked the most boxes as a complete supercar experience. It looks phenomenal. It sounds phenomenal. It drives incredibly well. The engine for me, naturally aspirated, B12, biggest tick in the box. Um, yeah, and I think it's the last of its kind. So that's why the A12 Superfast lands at number one on the Smiles Per Gallon list of 2017. But anyway guys, that is it. That is it for the year. Um, thank you to everyone so, so much for watching. It has been an absolutely astonishing year. Um, I really don't know <laughs> where we're gonna take this thing into 2018, but it does begin with a, a Ferrari, my um, 458 Speciale, in Dubai for the first two weeks of January. So we're gonna be creating some really cool content out, out there. There's some pretty strong stuff lined up. And then, um, yeah, then it's on to the uh, snow tour as well. And that's just January. So desert, snow, Ferraris, all sorts of stuff. As always, if you've enjoyed this year, I'm gonna try my very, very best to up the game next year. So please subscribe to the channel. There's some fantastic stuff in the, in the pipeline. Um, massive thank you for all of your views and support this year. Let's try and go big in 2018. As always, thanks for watching. See you next year. Ciao.